All right, Grand Rising, everyone, welcome back. It's Shay Seeking, and we're um, back. I had to take a detour real quick, y'all. <laughs> I had to do some um, Sekhmet soul searching, right? So again, um, you know, I guess there's always talk about something, but uh, I was just thinking about something. Somebody brought up something when it came up to the wilderness, right? So I think we did a video. These glasses are about to irritate me. You understand? I'm going to have to. I'm going to pay all that money. And for some reason, they're just getting real loose. So maybe I just need to take them in. Um, Maybe I should take them in and get them adjusted or whatever. Let's try to do it with that. Oh, okay. We're going to still try. Because <laughs> they keep slipping down and it's irritating. So again, um, we're in Exodus. Oh. So earlier when I was saying exile, I kept trying to wonder what the other word was in this exodus. Even though we were supposed to be in um, Genesis. I was trying to get to Genesis 36, but something stopped me here. Actually, I thought I was reading Genesis 36, but I guess not. It's Exodus 36. But something uh, brought was brought to my attention. Um, so again, it says these beautiful, beautiful clothing for the priests to be used when uh, ministering in the holy place. Right? Um the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and for his sons. Okay, so again, the people were in the tents. Now, again, we look at these terms, because I'm just, we're going to peek at some of these terms, right? Okay, because we, we already went through probably most of these, but, you know, since there's a lot of people that's probably new or something, you know, I just wanted to go ahead and go into this. And again, you can also do this on your own. That's why, again, we share the tools so that people can be able to do this on their own. And that's all we really got, that and whatever it is within, you know what I'm saying? Your eyes and ears. Um, so again, it, this, this triggered me, right? So again, the people went to their tents to prepare their gifts. Those whose heart were stirred by God's spirit returned with their offerings and materials for the tabernacle. Um, oh, I think I just hit that fly with my hand. <laughs> Um, it's equipment for the holy garments. Both men and women came who were willing hearted and they brought the Lord, the offerings, gold, silver, and earrings. You know, this is almost making me think about the cakes and stuff that were made for Inanna, right? Because it's kind of like stuff that have been put all together in order to bring something forth, right? So again, this is talking about rings and stuff. This is also reminding me of, you know, energy that would be surrounded by an idol, you know, as well. Um... But it was the ram skin and goat's hair and goat skin. So I had to go back and look. And it was talking about some stuff like in antiquity, how people would use this for like spells or sorcery sometimes. Um, I mean, for good and probably not so much. <laughs> um, it, it, it just made me think about that. So I kind of went back and did just a teeny bit of research. And, and, and we're just going to look at something here. So again, spinning the goat's hair into cloth. Um, so the people of Israel, the men and women who wanted to assist in the work given them by the Lord's commands to Moses, uh, brought their free will offerings to him. Okay. Um, and it says here, and Moses uh, told them, uh, Jehovah has spe specially appointed uh, uh, Bez Bezalel, the son of Uri, the grandson of Hur in the tribe of Judah. Okay. Um, he will be able to create beautiful workmanship in gold and silver and bronze, and he can cut and set stones like no other jeweler um, can do. Okay, beautifully carving in the fact he of his um, has every needed skill. In fact, he has every needed skill. Okay, and then it says, and God made him, um, and oh, made him teach both. He and Ahala, okay, somebody from the tribe of uh, Dan, okay, that hath filled with the wisdom and heart of all, I mean, to work all manner of works, an engraver, and cunning workman, an embroiderer, okay, a weaver, okay. So again, this energy here, I want to read it also out of the Living Bible real quick. Um, I'm going to start at 36, right? Um, because this is making me think about energy that has something to do because, okay, this tent means a portable shelter of skin or coarse cl cloth stretched over poles. So also, you know, that makes me think about, you know, the physical sense of a tent, right? And then the tents we see of what we, we, what we perceive, right, of antiquity. But, 
you know, it makes me think about even like a sheltering energy of weaving together different people or different groups in order to create a covering. Now this covering could be something to, to, to protect something or these coverings can be something to hide something. And the fact that we're talking about, I know we're saying jewels and all these things like this, right? But, um, you know, it says an Obadiah gifted teachers of their, uh, Obadiah gifted teachers of their skills to others. So this also, you know, it's kind of like a cloaking energy, like what we were just talking about the other day. Like what has been cloaked? Um, yeah, because even when we're using these terms like sewing, and I think it's going to use weaving here. I'm pretty sure there was, uh, it says something about weaving in here. Maybe it's the next page, okay? Yeah, weavers, the skilled weavers, right? So again, we know that in there's a certain type of witch or entity or pagan or, you know, these terms just mean people before religion okay <laughs> um so again uh pagan saracens and things that they were coming to hunt down and kill until they took everything that they could from them and the doom diverses or dumb diverses this is the same thing right okay so again either someone is trying to cloak and hide someone because they don't want because we're using idol because that's why i'm probably getting that idol energy here when it said that they brought all these things and supported this one idol so that they can and it's making me think of supporting a feminine energy within our so-called awakened community you know there's so many different aspects of it so i'm just really being in layman's terms right okay um but it's almost as if someone dialed up an energy to put in the face of the people to and use the information. I see the sorcery here. I see the um, Sekhmet energy here. I see, um, mm, what else do I see? I see the copycat energy. I see the succubus energy. I, I see that all here, right? So again, there's always going to be two sides to a story. And that's why I like to read the, the book in that manner. Okay, so again, we're talking about somebody putting this together and weaving some things. So it just made me think about even how I stumbled across the, um, um, so the indigenous community, so-called woke, ancient, whatever communities we have, you know, within this awakening community, right? And, uh, and then you have the, um, those who are seers and readers and, you know, things like that, right? So again, I'm, I'm noticing that, you know, like sometimes you can get drunk, right, off of inference. That's why I just like to be real thorough here, right? Because sometimes people can get drunk and getting drunk or like even intoxicated again, okay? Because that term is going to be in here when we look at these different terms here. Um, whatever it is, it's just made me think about a segment and <laughs> being poisoned or, you know what I'm saying, given whatever the thing was that she was given. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just see that energy here. So when we're talking about weaving all this stuff together, it makes me think about which uh, or energies that are weavers or, you know, things like this, right? You know, and how I told you guys, I can see people that have genuine gifts and then people that have been guided or people that are coming from that whole cult energy that's behind the scenes that is being used to uh, defile uh, people or crucify people, right? So again, there's some people that, like I said, are legit, in my eyes and then there's some people that are connected to that and they just have a um a ear in on what's going on behind the scenes and so we're telling these uh general stories and it may be you know what i'm saying anybody can pick something from something and make it something so even like that whole thing about anybody can mix anything out of the smoke with namke uh what esther said in that book the spring but she said this is different what she saw so you know what i'm saying like the, the images and stuff that i've showed you on here of the strange things or whatever that have happened you know it, it's just a, i don't know like i said i'm just looking at this right um right um fill him with the spirit of god the tribe of judah and he hath filled him with the spirit of god in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and all manner of workmanship yeah you know this is just making me think of that energy like i said in order to put things together. I mean, I'm even thinking music. You know, I'm thinking all kinds of things here, okay? So it says, all the other craftsmen um, with God-given abilities are to assist Be uh, Be Bezazel. Okay, I can't get that name. Um, and Oliab in constructing and furnishing the tabernacle. 
right? Because again, you know, we have a physical aspect of a tabernacle, but you know, it's, it, we could be talking about like a group or a club or a place of meeting or a dwelling place, you know, in a sense. You know, so it says, Mo, so Moses told Bezazel and O, o Halel, uh, Leb, okay, these names, and the others um, who felt called to the work to begin. Moses gave the uh, materials donated by the people and additional gifts were received each morning. So again, I feel like this is talking about a message. Message, <laughs> like I said, I think this is talking about, again, information being fed or leaked. I think it it, it, it has to do with that. I, I'm sorry. And I think that this is why I've accumulated a lot of people that may, you know, they don't show support, but it just seems like everybody turns against or there's like this form of hate or something or envy almost in a sense. Like, because could you imagine if you've been doing something for your whole life and here come this person, this girl out of nowhere that's talking like this and everybody else see it this way and nobody see it the way she see it. See, because we're getting somewhere when we're talking about this whole energy right here, the wilderness, right? And we're going to get somewhere. We're going to just go a little bit deep. We're going to just take it there today. Okay. So if you really think about it, you know, yeah, but finally the workmen all left there. And maybe this is why Moses, you know, because Moses have something to do with this. I mean, these Moses and Aaron, you know, these is my uncle's names over decades or whatever. But, you know, that don't mean nothing. Other people have these names as well. But again, I'm, when I detect the energy, I, I detect the energy. Right. So, again, um. And this is why I'm saying about the middleman in a lot of different instances, because that, that, that can be the thing that throws off something. It, it, that's what it feels like every time. So, um, so yeah, so it's saying we have enough material now um, on hand to complete the job. So again, but this is also making me think about some energy that I've seen in media as well lately when, when some of these interviews have been going on with asking for certain papers and documents and things like this. And and someone saying, well, these things correlate with, but, you know, and, and it's just this energy, y'all. I just see this as this, because Source just kind of picks out times to show me if he's using a vassal, no matter what department, um, to show me something, right? Um, so Moses uh sent a message throughout the camp. Now, I'm not saying this is the only instance, but these, these words are almost like tarot, right? We're in the Torah, right? Yeah, we're in the Torah. So again, these words are kind of like tarot. So, you know, uh, to me, it's just to me, right? Um, and I'm pretty sure other people probably have this ability as well, but I'm just saying, okay? So announcing the more donations were needed, and the, see, and this is making me think about them talking about the spending money and how much more money do you need and what's being done with the money. And it almost just makes me feel like there's something going on where something's going on with some lump sums of money. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know. It, it means it's almost like somebody. I just think that, like I said, that it's funny because I feel like this, there's something going on in my name. And I cannot really put pinpoint exactly because I think that people have taken an oath to be silent. People have taken an oath on certain people's lives, possibly. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it, it's it's this is deep, and I'm wondering why. Like I feel like more people know about this than will let out, but I feel like people can't speak about it. You know, it, it makes me think like, is this a big trick <laughs> by God, or is this you know what I'm saying? Some legit something that's like I'm in the Truman Show, and that's just all I'm saying. Okay. So, because nothing seems to have been going my way this whole time, and I'm still sitting here doing this particular type of work that I know is moving mountains, is doing things, but it's not anything that I can see. But, you know, that whole be patient and all this other stuff, like I, my female intuition kick in, and it just seemed like something is being held back, and somebody's trying to hold on for a certain amount of time. And I don't like the fact of not being in, you know, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a control freak anymore since my oldest daughters have left <laughs> the building, Right? But I had to be like knowing where they were, you know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't crazy like that or, or, or like that on them, but you know what I'm saying? It, it's a certain way. So, but I don't like to be someone that's also attached to something that I have no, no clue what's going on in it. Could you imagine having a business or something or being an heir to something, a throne or something and everybody else is out running the kingdom while you're sitting there wondering what's going on and being kept at bay? 
You understand what I'm saying? Right? So it's concerning. That's all I'll say. It's just very concerning to somebody like me because I have the tools and the quality to a certain extent with the right assistance to do the job myself and now. So why do I have to wait? Is it because everybody's observing certain things because they already know who I am? Because they look at me as the Messiah. They're waiting to see if I see myself as this, which again, it's almost like that energy of I'm tired of like telling these people over and over again. And it's just like, it's just getting me into a deeper something like, the people just don't want to hear it. And so it's just like, whatever for me at this point, you know? But I'm not going to just sit here, like I said, and seem like I'm sitting here waiting to die. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that energy. Okay? So it's just very strange to me. And I believe if Source is sitting with me, and I told you guys, I can feel the negative and Source, right? So then again, if this is something that's going on, I think at some point in time, I would not get all this love bombing energy and all of this surveilling energy and not see any kind of you know what i'm saying results it just doesn't make sense to me okay so camp announcing no uh okay more do donations the skill weavers made uh 10 sheets of fine linen da, da, da. okay so again six feet wide okay whatever whatever all right so again it's just making me think about this energy of like Something about, I don't know, I was just asking myself when I was reading that, where is my father? Because it just almost seems like something happened and I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I know that there is the physical perception that we see of these tabernacles and stuff. We even did a pretty deep video on it. But it just makes me think that there's more to this story. So I think that's it there. I just wanted to put that together, that this whole thing about skilled weavers and stuff like that, you know, that makes me think about manifestation. You know what I'm saying? And again, good can be done with it and bad can be done with it. The same thing with any other type of thing when it comes to the tarot or anything like that. That's just how I see it. So, um, wait a minute. Because I want to, okay, here's Genesis. Okay, y'all, my, my fault. <laughs> so again, we're going to look at, I just keep drinking water and my mouth is just so dry. I apologize if I keep smacking and making all the noises that people can't stand. <laughs> okay, yeah, I hope, I'll be looking too serious. I'm looking down. Okay, stop. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, you know, there's a couple of terms, like, because, you know, there's always this debate about Hebrew and if people know how to read and know Hebrew and all that other stuff. But, you know, I like to go back to what the term actually really means. Goodness, this track is getting on my nerves. Everything getting on my nerves this day over here. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> I think that what I'm going to do is just like a cluster search real quick. And we're just going to look at all the terms that I feel like came up or are going to come up. And we're just going to see exactly kind of like what they mean. Again, something's uh, tent is talking about something stretched out, um, a portable shelter um, of skins or a coarse cloth stretched over poles. So, again, this also, like I said, it makes me think about uh, energy. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it makes me think about that too, right? Because um, again, it's like a blanket to blanket something is to kind of cover it up, you know what I'm saying? So it kind of just makes me feel like that kind of energy is being talked about there. Okay. All right, so let's go back to this little article that I had found, right? So it's talking about the, it says the Midbar, Araba, and Eromos. Uh, biblical wilderness. So it says, um, words translated as wilderness occur nearly 300 times in the Bible. Okay. I hate looking down. <laughs> um, formative Hebrew memory. Okay. So a formative Hebrew memory, right? Is the years of wandering in the wilderness, right? Mixing experiences of wild landscaping, 
So wild land, you know, like wild ass, asses and wild oxen and all that other stuff, okay? But then we're talking about wild land. So, you know, it's kind of giving me a savage energy, a shamanic energy, a naturalist, Wiccan, pagan, some type of energy to me, which is just, to me, just using natural healing sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Of healers and seers and telepathic energy, right? So again, um... Yeah, wandering in the wilderness, mixing experiences of wild landscaping. Again, those are the ones that have breaking, broken the chains off of the minds, I feel, right? Of searching for the promised land, okay? So again, a lot of people have gone on these journeys to search for the promised land. Again, the land could be an actual partial land. It could also be an actual person that is the promised land, right? Um, you know, like I said, or a location, right? Okay? And of encounters with God, okay? So again, if you find the promised land, you're probably going to find God because God is going to be dwelling possibly in the land, okay? So it says, uh, wandering takes place in Midbar, uninhabited land where humans are nomads, okay? So again, so uninhabited land, that makes me think about even barren land or land that doesn't have water or just land that's free, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what did we... No, it said Moses is free will, Okay? So again, it's, it's making me think about that. Uh, we're human, see? And that's where we get that from because there's man, there's human, you know what I'm saying? So we're humans. That's part hue and part man. And sometimes we think that has to do with skin tone, but I'm wondering if we're talking about different beings. I just wonder if we're talking about something a little bit deeper than that. Okay, again, or energies or spirits or, you know what I'm saying? It just makes me think in duality. Everything makes me think in duality or try something. Okay, this common Hebrew word refer refers often to a wild field <laughs> where domestic animals, indigenous, native, you see what I'm saying here? <clears throat> excuse me, may be grazed and wild animals live um, in contrast to cultivated land. So separate than cultivated land. So this is talking about savages. This is talking about that in that energy of wild Indians. The cultivated part is the part that has been integrated or grafted in or is in association with the colonizing energy, Okay. This nose ring. Look, y'all, everything is bothering me today, okay? Um, so in contrast to cultivated land, hence sometimes the pastures of the wilderness. So again, the, past, the pastures of the wilderness. So again, when we talk about Indian sale for land, those signs, we all seen them. When we're talking about just even in general, us talking about that we feel like somebody else is cultivating our land right now, right? In our name, Right? Do you see what I'm saying here? While, while now we even talking civil, civil war energy where that border had been thrown up. Is there an imaginary border here now when it comes to this Afghan issue? Okay. Mm-hmm. Hence sometimes. So again, when we're talking sharecropping, when we're talking that energy of sharecropping, the, the, the woman couldn't speak in the church or the congregation or the building, which a building could be a courthouse and a church, or it could just be meaning that sense of thing. So she couldn't speak for herself. So again, this is what makes me think about a conservatorship where there's people out there that may be of your lineage, but right, the, you may not even be aware of these people um, that may conspire with people that you do have connections with in order to be someone who is cultivating your land in your name, in the name of God. Do you see what I'm saying? In a sense here, hold on. <laughs> yeah, so this is this makes me feel like that, like domestic animals, because after you're going to be domesticated, right? Grafted in or, you know, whatever. And then again, like King said, not only that, <laughs> I like how he says that, they brought people in to um, from different countries, right? Which could have been different states. Come on now. And, and you know what I'm saying? Old world talk, I guess, right? <laughs> um, to farm the land, pay them to do it, 
and do all these things when whose land was it like I'm saying in the first place. So we're not saying this to say, hey, you know what I'm saying? We're saying this to say, let's bring order to the court and see what we're really talking about here and see how far gone we have been in the education system for this amount of time and how much money you've paid to go into it. I think they're talking about making it some type of education free. You might as well, because again, now we're seeing what it's been doing. <laughs> it carries you away from that wilderness and it trains you to see something in one way, to give you a perception and common sense is gone. <laughs> Discernment is, do you see? Another word, okay, the land was desolate. So again, just think about this. Let's think about this. So this is where it talk, talks about Genesis 36 and 24. So I think that's where we're going to go is Genesis 36. And it says a land that was desolate. And most people say, oh, it was desolate because something was wrong with it. God did. No, was it? Or was it because something was being done to it? Do you see what I'm saying? Was it because, again, there was other people in tents using the coverings of this entity and this person or this king or this emperor or empress, you know what I'm saying, is being cast out. Because they had to make makeshift tents with the same type of coverings. So you can fabricate something enough. If you can use documents to doctor something enough, then it's going to look like somebody is some, somebody can take my whole damn identity. Do you know what I'm saying? And assume the role. <laughs> this is what could be done while I'm waiting. And that's what I'm saying when it comes to the intuitive nature of these women, especially here in the Americas and other places as well. Indigenous closest to earth. You see what I'm saying? There's something, it doesn't even have to do with your skin color. It's something about your makeup. Something about your DNA makeup that allows us to be able to see in a different light. I'm sorry. And that's just what it is. And nobody can just do that. They can, they can study, they can take notes on this channel. You can do what you want to do. You can try to dress like, you can try to look like, you can try to achieve the role, but you cannot. And see, some of these people think they know that. And I think what has happened is there's a group of people that may have feared some of the things that were coming out of my mouth. And so they thought that I was some kind of way. And so they say, oh no, we don't want that one. We're going to create one. And this is where the, this is where the gig is up, Right? So, because then source always say he's going to raise one, right? Up. Okay. And the uh, impassable shall be glad, right? Impassable. Sound like somebody that can't be passed. I don't know. And the wilderness shall rejoice. Okay. So, again, wilderness is making me think again, you know, about those who are. You know, even when we're talking about these, what they're calling so, so quote unquote, Trump supporters, um, conspiracy theorists, um, mentally ill, you know, these people that they're trying to name with these degenerate names or these misnomers as groups, right? In public, they're using their platforms. They're weaving together things to make it seem something about these particular people, Right? To, to create this fear about these people and their gifts, to make there be something. So even on the highest scale to the lowest scale, this is what's being done, all right? Land that lies waste with Choraba, land without water is Yeshimin. So, hmm, you know, I won't go any further than that. Source told me to shut my mouth. So we'll just leave that there what I was gonna say, and we'll continue. The wilderness is a local um, for intense experience, a locale for um, intense experience of stark need for food and water. Hmm, I mean, we're gonna go into the term wilderness in a second, I just wanted to read this before we go into the Bible, okay? So again, food and water, mana, right? The nourishment, right? And quails. Okay, we were just talking something about quails the other day or within the past couple of weeks of isolation. Hmm. Well, Elijah and the still small voice. Hmm. Is that Esther? Are we talking about the spring? Are we talking about Jerusalem? Did we find it? <laughs> In 
in the still small voice. of danger and divine deliverance. So again, good and bad, so-called good and bad, right? <sighs> Hagar and um, Ishmael, which remind me of Hathor for some reason, of renewal of encounters with God. Again, walking with God in the garden. Hmm. Moses in the burning bush, the revelations of the divine. So again, the burning bush, George Bush. Like, I'm just wondering, y'all, hold on, hold on. Hmm. I don't know that always, when I read the burning bush, especially with the stories that I've looked at in history, when it comes to certain family lines and bloodlines and names, I'm telling you, something is there. <laughs> something is there. There's a psychology. Okay, the revelation of the divine name, Mount Sinai. There's a, a physiological uh, psychology, right? Um, as well as a geographical, a, as geography of wilderness, a theology gained in the wilderness. It's kind of like this whole platform and many others that I know of. Many others that I know of that I actually respect. And they're going to give it to you how it is. They don't care about your feelings. They're just going to speak the truth. And I haven't seen them change. There's a lot of male platforms. And I haven't seen them change over time. And they tell you how it is. <laughs> right? So again, uh, linguists will make the point that the Hebrews did not have an exact equivalent or contemporary English word for wilderness. Nevertheless, the Hebrews evidently knew the experience of comfortable confronting the wild okay so again to confront the wild so it's kind of like that that's just the energy like I said I'm picking up like a confrontational kind of that's what it was like what I was trying to tell y'all it's like a confrontational kind of energy that people are just mad at what I'm saying or whatever like I'm doing something you know what I'm saying I'm just doing what is natural to me you know and and, and I'm sorry I mean the bible tells that whatever this information that's going to come from these individuals is going to be something that is going to make men's information look like it is nothing. And I'm just saying, nobody's saying that you don't need to go to the school to become a doctor or whatever, but you could just, you know, do elementary or you could do whatever. And then you could learn how to be a doctor by going, sitting under a doc, like an understudy or something, or like a, whatever you call that thing when you go and work for free, an internship or, internship or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because before this school, somebody was doing something so that's just how I look at it, right? And they would have been looked at as probably pagans and Saracens and these kind of these other kind of energies. So, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, I just think that it's a lot to do. But so I, I, I guess I can't really be upset that my platform is like how it is because I think when people do, you know, what I'm saying they see something a certain way and they don't want to change it or something. I don't know. I don't know. An isolated place. A wilderness uh, figures at a critical juncture of uh, in life, in the life of Yeshua. Same thing. While Yeshua is baptized by John and then driven by the spirit into the wilderness for 40 days, the devil is there, but so is the spirit. A great while before he rose and went out to a lonely place and there he prayed. Mark 1 and 35. This record, uh, this records a search for solitude. Oh my goodness. Yeah. OK, for self-discovery, for divine uh, presence. But this process criti uh, crucially seems to require the ambience of the natural environment, the ambiance, probably. OK, I'm thinking ambient. <laughs> OK, sorry. OK, so of the natural environment. Wow. So it's almost even giving me some Enoch energy as to when he was going throughout the garden and was like, hold up. What's that smell? Hold on. I need to know what that is. I need to get close to it. So it's kind of like that energy, like I said, of the whole thing of the scent in the sense of this divine masculine and feminine energy of antiquity. Almost like, you know, like another lifetime type of energy. That I mean, it's just what I see. Okay. Oh, no, we don't need to close this yet. Hold on. All right, we're not done. 
function. Okay. Okay. So let's just look at these terms because then I went ahead and started looking at these terms and then it just led me all the way down this rabbit hole, right? So, oh, I, what did I do with the picture? Mm, okay. Let's see. So again, um, oh, so again, here's a book. It was about like a, uh, I think like witchcraft or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but it's like illustrated by something specimens and tales. This could be true or not. You know what I'm saying? We're just looking at it. Um, these um, evidently, a, there is a evident. Okay, these words are smaller. We're going to have to just deal with it. Okay. <laughs> um, between the dung of the she goat and certain ancient something um had in sparta now this is broken up because they're just giving me like the the no preview version of the book right so you just get what you get and you can't like tap on it to go into it and it's on google right certain ancient had in sparta a shrine where she goes were sacrificed to her somebody okay so again i feel like again we're talking about sparta spartanburg so it's taking me back to even the spartanburg south carolina that's where my family is from a portion of it. So, um, another protective charm common among the Southern Hungarian gypsies. Again, how do we know? Again, these people were not with using these terms for themselves prior to colonization. Um, all right. Um, so again, it's talking about dragons, uh, brooms, goats, uh, strange, uh, steeds and in, infernal dance. Um, let's see. Something about uh, voodoo, a devil's dance, okay? All right. So again, I guess this is like a cuffing of the most beautiful witches, right? So that also made me think about that whole thing of like all of the beautiful garments and stuff that were given to certain people too. It, it made me think about that too, like idol imagery to dress and cloak these women. Because I noticed that a lot of females in the certain... Um, uh, seeing an oracle energy like again I don't know what they've done in their whole entire life but a lot of people as I got to know their channel sometimes I've seen people change there's some that never did you know they just you know and I believe they legit have gifts right and then there's some that automatically start changing once I start watching so like I said this is just something weird you don't have to take the energy you could whatever you don't you know you don't see it then whatever but then I noticed a lot of people that weren't showing their faces were now showing their faces. And it just was weird for me. You know what I'm saying? Just once you start, when you wake up from something like this and you by your damn self, you be looking around like, what is going on? And if nobody's going to give you no answers, nobody's going to give you help. Even sometimes it's like the ancestors and the guides. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm just like, what's going on here? <laughs> nobody going to give me no heads up. <laughs> so again, um, let's see. And then it says something down here about the scapegoat or sufferer who is martyred that uh, may that many may escape. Or in other words, the unfortunate minority is a natural result of sacrifice. So, again, that makes me think, like I said, that is what somebody's trying to do to me. <laughs> That's what they're trying to do. And, I, and at this point in time, there's no reason for me not to think that I'm the holy one or a portion of that holy one when you put Yeshua and Christ together. It just, there's no other reason for me to think that I'm, it's not. I mean, we're talking about King James anyways, and we look at the last names then, I mean, and the people that they were, you know, alongside, or, you know, it just, to me, it's just all just making sense now, okay? So, let's look at these things. So, it made me think about the Sekhmet energy, right? Okay. <clears throat> let's see. No, 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 no. Uh-oh. Did I really? No. That's not right. This is crazy, y'all. <laughs> um. Well, I guess not. Well, let me go back here to this then. Um, okay, here. Okay. So I'm going to tell you something else it reminds me of, right? 
okay because you guys know i already had i kept my segment image up there on um on youtube right so it says okay rod loved the children of the earth they were his creation so he called upon all the great egyptian deities for help but no one could temper the rage of his out of control goddess finally thoth the God of wisdom came up with a plan. All right, so again, this has got to do with the savage energy. See, and then Nubia reminds me of Nu, Nu, Nabta, is it? Or the Nu, Nublia? Mm, Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Nebula. <clears throat> okay, Upper Egypt into the Delta, northward. Okay, all right, through Upper Egypt into the Delta and the Lower Egypt. You know what I'm saying? She became so intoxicated and taste of human blood that she made no distinction between good and evil. So again, I think this has to do with people projecting their energy on me. They were afraid and they didn't know what was going on and what was being seen. Now, again, I may have offended people with some of the things that I've said, but you haven't heard me again directly attacking a group of people because of who they are. You hear me talking about the agenda surrounded by many of these things that are going on and, and bringing shedding light on them right so you know like i said i think it comes this a lot of this stuff that i'm going through even when it comes to this divine energy is miscommunication you know what i'm saying and just being someone that's just built different like i don't you know what i'm saying it's kind of, kind of like they said kong don't bow down to nobody so it's kind of hold on a second i'm almost done i will not stop this because i'm, I'm only 10 I, need, I only have 10 more minutes and i'm stopping the video Okay, so, um, yeah, so again, he called on all the great Egyptian deities for help, but no one could temper the rage of his out-of-control goddess. Finally, Thoth, the god of wisdom, came up with a plan. He told Ra to have the woman of Hel um, Heliopolis brew 7,000 vats of barley beer spiked with powerful herbs. Now, again, um... This makes me think about an army, right? Of some people that are brewing something together. It's, it's making me think Hebrew. It's making me think Bruton. It's making me think uh, brewery, right? Um, because we're talking about beer, right? Um, okay, so again, spiked with um, uh, powerful herbs, such as poppies brought from Elephantine Island and south and in the south, the mandrake root. Um, a plant of solaceness, uh, solaceness, whatever family. Now, we already know, I mean, around the time the 18th dynasty, dynasty, what I think is the 1800s, that there's an overthrow of, or let's just even think, because I think the Mississippians around that time too, the 1800s was the last places to be conquered, right? Um, but... If we go back to even just the 16th dynasty, the 1600s, right? That's when colonization started in Americas. So whenever we're talking ancient of Egypt, we're talking about America. It just, that's the facts. And the truncated pyramids are just pyramids here um, that have had the heads removed, just like the individuals that were here already, like the bloodlines that we come from. Seven thousand vats of bar beer spiked powerful herbs, okay, things like this. All right, mandrake root, um, and other magical mind altering substances and pomegranate juice to dye the color of blood. When Sekhmet lay down to um, take a nap, see now step. Let's we're gonna stop right here because this is when people give me trash about talking about, you know. Um, this whole thing about altering, right? And then d juice uh, to dye the color of blood and she took a nap. Now, I don't know why I'm getting a plant in the Selenina Sea, I don't know, family, but I don't know why I'm getting here that, you know, it's kind of like somebody could fool you. Like for a time, I think I went into the Basset energy, right? Within the past couple of years. And then this year is when, again, I started to get in contact with other beings, right? And other energy, right? So 
it makes me think that, but then for a while I had went into this thing because I felt like even my body was under attack. So again, obviously this must've been already starting on prior to this year that I actually am front line, like into it now. Right. So, um, right. But, but okay. I can say that I started to do more biblical and I stopped doing the so-called conspiracy. Okay. Like two years ago. All right. And I really slowed down on videos cause I just got really busy and again, sleep issues or whatever. Right. Okay. So, um, yeah. So this is also making me think about like when I came back and I, I would make a comment like, okay, guys, you know, they got these people that's going in position in certain states and they look like you, but they're not you. So me telling you that I see who's who and I know and I look at people's faces and features and things like this, can't tell you exact, I can't tell you definitely 100%, but I can kind of say, you know what, these people look like these people or those features remind me of the people over here because I'm just very observant like that. And if I don't know, I won't say nothing. But it just so happens when I started to see these individuals and say, oh yeah, we got a so-called black this, this, and that. And I'm looking at these people like, that's not, uh, that's, that's not an American. I'm sorry. Like if that's what people was going for, you know what I'm saying? If that's what people was going for, but it's not even an attack on a person or anything. And personally, it is the agenda that I see being pushed because of it. Because when people put other people into positions like that, they are looking to put me in danger or other people like me in danger. And that is going to be a problem. So you can try to fool me by putting someone, you can try to hire other people in the community to try to turn on me and look at me as if I don't belong and look at me and talk about my skin tone and all this other stuff. But I just don't think that you can get more American than what this is right here, this cinnamon red gold, whatever. And so that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's just hilarious to me for people to, you know, say the things that they do. And so, you know, um, let's just not get too carried away. Because we didn't, we didn't call the, we said copper color, cinnamon color, all these colors here in America. It didn't say swarthy. The swarthy in olive tones came from overseas. So again, most times, right? So we can't just look at that. Even when we're talking about the copper color tone, it still has been altered from what it was, right? <laughs> Prior to, because they, they were already mixing with the Dutch and different groups already. Okay, so even that's altered, even in a sense, right? And then how many years have it been since then? Look at where we're here now. People's skin tone. So I, really, it don't have nothing to do with your outside surface of anything. It has to do with the soul, with the spirit. That's something that's within you. And either you have it or you don't, okay? But again, somebody can, man can try to play around and try to alter it. They can try to build the being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My whole thing is it... Is it my so-called divine masculine too? <laughs> I mean, because I, I, I've always watched 18th century. I've all, Marie Antoinette, like these are my favorite movies. I've been all up in rain. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, this is my favorite stuff to watch ever. Like I'm, I be engulfed in it. So just to see all of the stuff that was going on in the background and everything like that, you know, like just don't think that that ain't, you know. And sometimes I'd be like, when it comes to like Catherine Medici, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, wait, she is just, and then sometimes I kind of feel her. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, I don't know. So whatever. So again, this whole energy, like I said, of feeling like someone, you know, so I can say physically to feel like, and also feel like, again, someone may have, you know, um, laced something of mine you know, once or something. I don't know. I mean, I feel like that's what Source was trying to tell me, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, when, when I when I see other readers and stuff like that and seers, it's just almost like in oracles and things like that. You know, like I said, I have to be careful because I know some people are just in on the thing and I know that some people are legit. And so when people were telling me like about people coming, there might be people in your neighborhood or something like this, when they were saying this in these readings, even if I just took one thing, it might just be that because, you know, I already had a sense that something was going on. And then for me to go throughout the neighborhood and actually be pulled and lured into going to a random person's house, happened to not even be her house. It happened to be her daughter's house. Now, I'm not saying that she's the one. I'm just saying that was very strange. <laughs> that was very strange for me to be able to pull on that energy like that. 
Okay. So again, um, yeah. So again, the tie uh, tie dye and the color of blood. When Sekhmet lay down to take a nap, and the priests and the priestess crept in and slow, and um, as they dared and poured the beer around her in puddles so that she would not miss, um, hoping that she would mistake the brew for human blood. Oh, like even this is just giving me chills because this made me think about even some. Ooh, this made me think about when I opened up my page back up, right? And um, some videos might have been on the page or whatever. And I don't know if, like, you know how sometimes when you delete a video or something, or sometimes you just leave it there, you never opened up and you never meant to use it and you might be talking or something in it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that made me think about that. Like, um, but that would be my own self, right? Um, and then it made me think about um, also um, the beer, you know, being poured in puddles made me think breaking up somebody's information and using it in smaller portions to try to make something sound some kind of way. Um, because, you know, there's lots of times when I feel like I wake up and I go on social media and it's almost like somebody telling me all the stuff that I did or something, but they got it all twisted up. So it makes it feel like somebody is taking my information. Whoever has access to the leaked information and the surveillance information is taking it and turning it into something else. Okay. So the whole raw energy, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm, it takes me back to Kanun, right? Because, or at, um, okay, we, we, let's just, let's just stay on track y'all. Okay. <laughs> because again, just because these people were consorts doesn't mean that these were not male energies that came in on female energies and overthrew them and overtook their shit and then end up being the rulers there. <laughs> See, and that's the problem in the first place because these women couldn't be subdued. They were too strong in their appearance. They were too strong in their standing. And again, this didn't, a lot of people didn't like this. It didn't go over well. You don't, you, you this is a so-called man's world. So, you know what I'm saying? Just remember that energy. Okay. So again, but it's the whole feminine energy here that poured the puddles around. So this makes me think about the females that's hating in the background and doing what they're doing to try to defile my information or my name or try to use it for their own or whatever they're doing. Sure enough, when she awoke, she discovered that the beer had uh, gleefully uh, lapped up um, and had lapped up the blood like brew. Okay. All right. So again, this also makes me think about also taking in the blood like because in the likeness of God or like man or like this. So again, if okay, and this will make me think about just even addressing the whole steward energy. A lot of people then I noticed that I started to see in the community, your people, your people, your people, or just like even directing it and then from certain people to speaking out of pocket, right? But it doesn't stop there. Like I told you, it's already this bloodlines that was already here in the Americas, dude. So again, even if it is a connection to that, you know what I'm saying? So that's another thing about people then not wanting a royal to rule. And so they decided to break up everything and go in on one, one coin or whatever. And then again, oust the empress. And kill off the family, you know, through legalities while, again, someone else might be assuming the position or the, the image of God <laughs> or a goddess, right? Or an empress or a queen, right? Or just that energy, right? I can already see them putting on my, putting on my material like it's theirs, right? These are the people that talk so badly about my channel and my platform prior to all of this. But then now they are doing things accordingly. So it's very strange. Okay. It's very strange to me. All right. So again, all right. Continuing until she became intoxicated. Okay. Uh, again, but taking in the information. And then also I look at it as just like alternative information or taking in different information. Right. Um, because everybody just thinks that it's because I'm seeing this information and, and, and it makes me think about also other energies that are trying to get into your head and try to get you to go in one direction or whatever. And I feel like at this point, I have to really stop and just ask what's going on and who and what, you know what I'm saying? Because just because I'm saying I feel this energy doesn't mean it's always me. You don't, you, it might, I'm just might be the messenger. You see, it has to really resonate for me to really assume it and take it on, right? So meaning I already knew this or something, and this is just like clarification for me. 
You see, that's what I do with pretty much everything. All right. All right. So again, <clears throat> yeah, so she became intoxicated and most uh, versions of the myth says she dr became drunk. All right. However, um, I believe that rather than being subdued, look at this. Why are we using that term? Into a drunken stupor. Because I think people think that I'm going to figure this out and I'm about to just go ballistic, right? Okay. Sekhmet's mind was expanded and her heart opened when she was able to see what the new eyes of compassion, um, what she had done. Her rage was transformed into love. And the story continues, Sekhmet having been pacified. It sounds like love bombing to me, y'all, okay? <laughs> and not, which again, if it's real, then I guess, I mean, it is what it is, right? But, okay. As the story continues, Sekhmet having been pacified and now of a more docile nature, some say as the water buffalo and the Egyptian cow, while others say it was like bast, um, the tamer version of the cat traveled south to Nubia and disappeared. Mm -mm. Okay. Ra was quite upset at the loss of his daughter um, and finally sent Thoth and his entourage to coax her back to Egypt. Thoth promised her that she would never be forgotten, um, that there would be a great fest feast awaiting her return and celebration every year in her horror. So again, in her horror, in her honor. So again, like this is making me, this is giving me all kind of energy about even just me being in the North fighting this battle here. And then also the South and the Carolinas and maybe even other states. I mean, hell, even California calling my name for some reason, right? So, I, you know, I may, I may have to go back in to tapping into some Khalifa um, energy here. But, you know, like I said, it, it, it reminds me of something somebody said the other day, too. And it's almost like it's like if you come to the South, you know, you can uh, claim your whatever, you know. But now that you're stuck in the North, you know what I'm saying? Because I do feel like there's something going on and, and it, it has left me in a situation. Right. OK. So. Who knows if it even has something to do with the atmosphere, even. Some say the water buff. Okay, let's see. The loss of his daughter. Because, if you know, and I ain't even going to tell you who I think sometimes that you right. Okay, so, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, to come back to Egypt. Um, right. So, I don't know. But this also made me think about, like, giving up a throne in the north. You see what I'm saying? And I feel like it's always supposed to be mine all of it so it's almost sounds like a compromising energy kind of like they already have that self set up where again these individuals in, in the community and stuff don't like me no more you know what i'm saying they they basically say that i'm not welcome in a, in certain uh, you know uh instances or whatever so it's like what would i want to you know what i'm saying what would i want to go there for <laughs> you know it's almost just weird. It's just real weird. Now, so everybody's already have militias. They already have everything set up down there. They're already probably controlling the area. You know what I, you know, people remember what I said because I'm pointing out people that's not even legit Americans that we just so happy to see somebody that look like a certain skin tone in this situation. You don't realize that these are not Americans. Now I'm not saying that people that's not Americans shouldn't be having no part, but there shouldn't be a ploy against people that are original Americans to make it so that we disappear anywhere or we go anywhere. So that's my whole thing. So again, if this Esther energy is to protect that a mark, that large amount of people that are still registered under African American or black, which is a misnomer, right? Then that's what it's going to be. Right? Okay. So let's see. So it's almost like there's just a threatening energy, like either I chill or, you know what I'm saying? It's a problem. And I feel like, you know, like any, that's just ridiculous. At this point, I just feel like it's just treasonous, all of this whole stuff that's going on right now. I think that the energy that should be put out is that somebody, you know what I'm saying, a family is under siege. Well, shit, is America under siege, right? 
And when we're talking about this, these deaths that occurred, is this something that people can be brought back to life? How easy would it be? How could, how all that time when the surveilling was going on and they were supposed to be what I feel uh, uh, um, assisting, but instead just distractions. All right. Okay, so again, um, in her honor, and nobody don't need none of no damn honor. Just give me what's mine now. You see what I'm saying? So it says allows one. Come on, y'all, because this video is turning out to be really, really long. Mm. Okay. Segment having been pacified. Um Because, you know, a daughter, again, has to do with dowry. And it, it could be having to do with, it does, we, not, we don't have to be talking about your birth father, your matern, uh, paternal father. You see what I'm saying? Not at this point, because something has already been done. All right? Okay? So it's almost like giving up. The, the, the insurrection on the Capitol is almost like giving up the Bagram airport, that kind of energy. Because airports are like high flight aerial type of energy, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, so it says, always one to love a good party. Hathor, Basset, Sekhmet returned to Egypt and celebrated and continued every year, probably uh, practice in some hmm, form to this day. Um, it should be noted that beer, I don't know, this, I think Inanna has something to do with beer as well. But Inanna looked like she got a whole bunch of treasures and gifts and parting gifts to go with. Where Sekhmet, I don't know. I mean, I ain't got all the way down to it yet, right? So again, I should be noted that the beer was very different in Egypt antiquity from what it is today so again there you go right there so even the energy in egypt i feel is more different down south than it has ever been and there's already people that are in prominent positions and being placed into certain situations right now okay and so again if there's someone that they look at as a traitor or someone that they look at as someone that was connected to royal bloodlines or government or whatever then what are they going to want to do to those people so again i don't trust them there's no place for me to be, but the place that I feel I should be. <laughs> and that's in a ruling position, a position of leadership. This is my opinion. All right. So again, they want you to talk about that part of the family because then that discredits the rest of what your makeup. You got thousands of grandparents and ancestors over time. You want me to take it down to just a couple of people that's on a piece of paper? You are your mind? Doesn't matter. <laughs> so again, since we're talking beer, I'm gonna go into... Um, mm, yeah, we don't want to go too much more into the segment energy, but we're going to go into, again, that uh, wilderness being the wild, uninhabited or uncultivated place, right? Wild deer, wild uh, animals. Um, okay. Let's see. And then we're going to go into the wild um, in etymology, and it says in the natural state. So again, we think about this as those who have the antidote and those who don't, possibly. Because again, what do you what is it? Inoculation or cultivation, even when it comes to like mushrooms and stuff like that, you know, it just makes me think, right? In the natural state, uncultivated, untamed, undomestic, uncontrolled, wild. So again, savage energy here. Woodlands or wild. Woodland Indians, game. So again, they would be game or bucks for somebody, right? Meaning sexual desolute or loose, okay? Wait, sexually desolate or desolute, okay? Uh, distracted with excitement or emotion or crazy. 
from 1590. So this is prior to colonization. Exciting, excellent. So again, how he would say, oh, these people, they don't want to deal with us. They're unruly. They're this. Oh, well, let's send in the troops, right? Okay. All right. So again, since they can't, like, I think when it came to like the Jews or something like that, they can't officially do stuff to certain people, but they can have the systems and everything set up so that they can. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to, uh, I don't know, it was something that I was reading a long time ago, right? It's kind of like the, the hands clean, right? So again, this is the whole energy of the people in certain places setting up the platform, but allowing people that look like you to infiltrate them and do the things that they want to do to you. <laughs> I mean, it's just genius. Like, I really just enjoy doing what I do here. I am sorry. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, again, crazy, um, exciting, excellent. The Wild West, whiskey. What a song. Smooth as Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> Y'all. Okay. All right. I'm trying to hurry up. Okay. Um, Okay, so we, we see wilderness, right? Um, let's see what else, what else we had here. Hebrew, okay? So we already did. No, we didn't. Okay, so again, Hebrew, because I want to see about brew, because I wanted to break the word down and look at the surname and everything like that. Mm. All right, literally one from the other side, um, but it says here, corresponding to Hebrew, okay? And Israel light, okay? So again, we do know that Israel and light is something that is a version of Israel or in the likeness of Israel. Whether we're talking maybe skin tone or we're talking about the DNA is not as toxic, it's not as thick, it's not as heavy, right? But I feel like this is the return, right? <laughs> um, or even the Israel, uh, that of Israel may be differentiated between Israel light because of the works, because of their gifts, could be another thing okay <clears throat> so again um ancestral name eber um one from the other side okay um reference to the euphrates okay um which i don't know might have something to do with the appellation and that area over there okay just my opinion uh immigrant okay the initial h was uh, restored in English in the 1600s. So again, it would have been Ebru or Eber. Now we've seen things again with dark-skinned Indians on different images and stuff that talk about the Eber or uh, different uh, names like this, right? Biblical Jew or Israelite, okay? Um, derogatory term for a Jew. Um, let's see, a, gent a Goy, a Gentile, a non-Jew. A people, a nation. Okay. All right. Okay. So, again, we go into the energy about um, tell, right? Okay. So, again, and this is what I've, this is what I've been trying to say the whole time. Um, the, another related term. Y'all know on high, nothing on this channel. So, another term that just stuck out to me is Lilith, the evil spirit, Hebrew folklore. Okay. So again, in that energy, right? <laughs> right? So I guess it's just like not willing to comply in a certain sense, but it's just like, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like in, in this instance, anyone has really put forth the real effort here to make any kind of connection with me um, on that level. So um, let's see. But I just, I, could, I just feel like I see that energy there um, that that's what, again, somebody wants to relay okay um let's see what else i'm trying to see what other terms we had here oh this ain't gonna let me do it like the other one how did you okay hebrew oh okay so again we then okay then we went into brew i believe okay let me see Semitic, okay. Ebru, Eber, Eber, okay. Mm, let's see. Hmm. Let's just look it up because it should be here, but it's not. 
because I had it already. Oh, maybe I just got my phone. Okay, so again, we were talking about the beer with Inanna, the beer with Sekhmet, the beer when it comes to brew, even mixing things together like these only people could do with their gifts. So again, brewery, brew 10. They said the names came from things that people specialized in, but we're automatically thinking about a brewery only. And again, maybe we were talking about something brewing in their minds, right? And then again, maybe some of this energy here in this text is trying to make it seem like it's something evil, but you're in first hand in this day and age in 2021 to look at what's going on here. And then you could be able to discern yourself if it's speaking evil or if it's just something that is, again, makes a lot of sense because those who have eyes will uh, see and ears will hear, okay? So again, uh, produce. Well, we already know that's talking about like the fruit, right? I don't know if we could even talk about, be talking about the apple, but I'm just saying it's just produce in general. Um, a beverage. So a lot of things to do with the mouth, taking something in, consuming something, drinking, eating, things like this. Okay. Prepare for mixing or boiling. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, to brew. Okay. Let's see. Sense of uh, make a drink by boiling. Preparation. Okay. A brew beverage. Okay. Mm, a building which beer is brewed. One who brews, a craftsman who brews or uh, sells ale or beer. Okay. Brewery, brew stir. Okay, so to boil, to bubble. Okay. To quarrel. Okay. <laughs> a well, a spring, a cistern. Hmm, very interesting. Heat. Okay, so let's look at. Okay, brew. We did brew. All right. Be in preparation. Hmm. So again, that could be in the sense of hiding where someone is in preparation for something, and that's why they are being, you know, sheltered or hidden. Or again, what what else could it be, right? Because there's going to be gossip. You know, who cares about gossip when, you, when you're on your path and you know you're going in the right direction? So who, you know what I'm saying? Who, who's not going to, who's going to really be upset about any kind of like real uh, gossip at all, really? I mean, or really hurt by it like that. I mean, and that's why I don't like really get that upset about it. It's just, you know, I don't know. So an ale is an intoxicating liquor made of malt fermentation. L beer, okay. Let's see. All right. Now it is saying that it deals with ale, a uh, ale or whatever is dealing with magic, um, and intoxication and possession and sorcery. Uh, the word was borrowed from Germanic something to Slavnik, okay, 15th century until 17th century. Um, ale stood for the unhopped fermented malt liquor, which had long been native drink of these islands. Again, that makes me think about the connection to the islands then. Okay, beer was um, the liquor in the 15th century. I just wanna run through here again. Beer, malt, uh, found in towns, ale, okay. Again, and then I was looking at this ale wife and it says herring, um, like a fish of North America, 1630, named from the word for female tavern keepers. Um, the fish so-called um, reference to a large abdomen. <laughs> okay, <laughs> y'all the funny source, cool plan. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> mm. Oh, listen, made me think about a cow and the fermented and the, the, the carbon and all that stuff and whatever it has to do with the stomach. Listen, made me think about this stomach things, right? Right now, this doesn't necessarily have to do with me, right? It's just I'm resonating with it heavily. Um, and then the fact that, again, I noticed that some people were saying something about stomachs today. It always, it always makes me think, like, okay, that a lot of the stuff that's, that I'm doing right now is sending me. It, listen, this is, and I just want this is like a whole experiment for me because I'll be, yeah, one day I'm gonna go back and watch all these videos and everything, right? So, again. Sometimes I do hear stuff in messages of readers that hadn't happened yet, like the stomach issue, right? 
So somebody threw that out today. So again, is that casting it on? So again, if you read it, and is that what's going to be happening? Because I feel like the energy, <laughs> um, one of the energies, again, a masculine energy, right? I feel like um, was kind of trying to give me that one day um, as to, you know, it even makes me think about I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to do a new thing, right? So again, <laughs> You have to think about the energy that's on this woman, right? That has been through all these things with this, these gods and these kings and everything all this time. And then, you know, it makes me think about like, okay, this time maybe it's not, it's going to be different. Maybe it's whatever. But you know what I'm saying? It's just, <laughs> you know, because I, I just really sit in this energy, like, I don't know. And, and just make me like, who can you trust? But I am like, dude, if somebody was going to do something to me, I mean, they would have been dead. I mean, because where I, you know what I'm saying? If somebody's going to do something to me, they'd have been dead already. So, you know, but I also don't want no trickery. Like I said, giving up something for something or again, being lured into something that's doing to do with something that I don't want to do. So it's, it's crazy. Like I said, just to be on the outside looking in at something that's happening around you or to you, right? And so it's funny that all this information just came in, accumulated over this time, even natural thoughts, but are they my thoughts, right? Okay, because you know, like we just read that that energy of God was there, but the, the so-called devil was too. But, you know, I just look at the energy again of God and the devil, you know, a higher and lower consciousness or even just in a, the same body even sometimes. And, you know, I don't know, I just look at it differently. Okay, so... <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I just hope that I'm, I'm just going to be able to grasp something from that whole thing right there. Uh, there was more that I wanted to say, but I think it's just, I'm just right now. So I just, I'm just like, okay, yeah, just come back to it. I don't like to push myself too much, but I'm, I'm pretty sure something should be in there. Okay. When it comes to the wilderness, because again, I think what I was trying to get on is the fact that the wilderness must have something to do with them possibly a mindset. It does. It, pro it probably doesn't even have to do with the place. Um, it could be even a certain types of bodies or temples of old, you know what I'm saying, that would have this information or this knowledge. And again, right? And sometimes I feel like, you know, if you go too far with it or whatever, you know, that this is when, you know, the whole sacrifice thing can happen. You know, when we're talking about these holy cows that were slaughtered, right? But is it really just because they don't, because they know who they are and they want to be in, in their position, right? Or is it because they did something bad? So this is a good time for us to assess what was really going on. Is these things like, you know, instead of people telling some people to work on certain things, could it just be that things are just happen happening to them because of who they are? <laughs> and that's just, you know, and it's look at arrogance and ego and all this other stuff and pride and stuff like that. And it's really not. It's just being very direct what was being said here. Because for me, it's not playtime. For me, you know what I'm saying? If somebody is trying to give me the perception that it's life or death, right? Right? Or something to be concerned with or not. So that's how I look at it. <laughs> but anyways, I do have to get out of here. I got to go to the hair store, y'all, finally. Um, and I will see you guys soon. Uh, take care. But yes, I do think that that's what we're talking about when it comes. It's a state of mind. In some cases. Because, you know, if we were all supposed to learn like Hebrew, so it's kind of like making, taking you back to a time of antiquity when the ancestors were, would use telepathic gifts and natural healing powers. And, you know what I'm saying? We were the doctors, we were the teachers, we were the this, we were the that, you know what I'm saying? So it makes me think of that. And then when I talk about these systems and these constructs that have been set up, people take it personal. I'm not saying anything about the actually having a construct like that within a community or a neighborhood or something like that. I'm saying something is wrong with the way that we've been dealt with as humanity as a whole over time and it keeps us in this brain you know what I want to say and again maybe some things now it's time to examine some things and what we're doing to ourselves and others and you know recalibrate it that's all ain't nobody saying that you know that's all I'm saying <laughs> things should be able to be benefiting of many more people than one percent minimum wage should not be seven dollars <laughs> you know what I'm saying Maybe if we, again, make it so like even with police forces, maybe the people that work at a police force, since they're working for the government and they don't want to be, you know, looked at as doing something wrong or allowing certain things to happen. Maybe they're the only people in certain communities in the area code or the zip or whatever. Um, 
you know, from that area can work in that area so that they know the people and the children. And the, you know what I'm saying? It's just certain adjustments that we can do. We make rules and protocol for everything else. And I was just saying, maybe that would be something because nobody else brings up nothing. They bring up the same things over and over again that get people in their emotions and feelings. We argue about it. We scrap about it for a while and then it's dead and it's gone. Nothing changed. So I wonder if we just did that right there. If you just did that right there. Gener in two generations, everybody, you'll be in a place where everybody knows your name, you know, right? Possibly. <laughs> All right. So again, it's just, it's a different thing and how you care about people and it wouldn't have nothing to do with no skin color, wouldn't have nothing to do with nothing. It'd just be, you know, the way it is, right? Because we got to start gaining trust back, period. And when it looks like this stuff is in shambles and the, the governing forces and things like this, and when you have people that are afraid to speak up or afraid to do certain things or whatever like this, then, you know, um, it's... It can take a toll on people, you know, and then you get more unruliness and then people get more brute force and then people get hurt and people end up missing and things like this go on. When I feel like sometimes we're dealing with beings that really don't have that type of compassion because they're, they don't deal with you all the time. They see you as what, what you're used as cattle, no matter if you went to school and got a degree or whatever. Most people work again. I love the fact that people are not that people are moving on to working for themselves and stuff like that. But most people are going to school is like that whole, you know, you're working for something that's going to one day, okay, you working 50 years for a job, 30 years for a job, and then all of a sudden you retire, there's nothing left for your children. So again, in order to get that generational wealth, you know, it's good to see that people are starting to take a look at, um, you know, different things when it comes to children learning certain things and crafts and to use their gifts and, you know, entrepreneurship and things like that. Right. Cause there can, there's always room for everybody to be doing something. Right. If we live in a society that's not going to be you, uh, that's not going to have some kind of system like a cash credit system that is going to punish certain people for speaking in certain ways and doing certain things that are not illegal, but it's just that your governing forces wouldn't want you to. Um, and then they can stop flow on your traffic to your platform or your channel or your store, online store or whatever. So again, that's something else to look forward to in the future because even when you're gone, your children will still be here and things will st still keep moving in a certain direction. So again, you'll have people that just it's impossible for them to thrive and survive because, you know, of their, what they think or their presence or what they wear or if they got this or if they got that. And so, again, that's all I'm saying. All right. So, again, take care and I'll see you guys later. Bye.